Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is one that I am absolutely giddy to be filming because this is an idea I've been working on for about six weeks and I'm only finally able to start making it a reality. So like the title suggests, this video is going to be all about making a Barbie dress in full size to fit me. And this is an idea that has been suggested a lot in my comment section. After the last time it was suggested, I did some research, and by research I mean shopping on eBay, and ended up falling in love with the vintage reproduction dolls and the vintage inspired dolls that Mattel has come out with over the past 50 years. And somehow, I've ended up owning a dozen of them. Since I have so many dolls, I am hoping to make this a little series on the channel so I can justify their purchase, but we'll see how this video goes first. So I let my patrons vote on which doll they thought I should create first, and the winner was Homecoming Barbie. She's actually a relatively new doll. She only came out a few years ago, and she's from their gold label or signature collection, so she's one of their collector's dolls, not one of the ones that's intended to be played with. And you can tell that because she comes with a stand. Now she is not a vintage reproduction doll, she is not based on one of their previous designs that came out in the 60s, however she is wearing a very 1950s slash 60s style dress, and she has the 1950s slash 60s style vintage makeup. So this is very much a vintage looking doll, even though she isn't actually that old. I was not at all surprised at this one because it's by far the most fluffy, roughly dress, which is right up my alley in terms of things I like to construct. So I think it's a great way to start off this challenge. Or not challenge, this adventure, because it's gonna be fun. At least that's my hope, but now I feel like I've jinxed myself and I'm gonna be crying over piles of tool later today. Speaking of later today, I'm hoping that this dress can be accomplished in two days, and I'm also hoping I have enough fabric for it because my local Joann's only had 12 yards of tool. So we'll just see how this goes. Before getting started, I do just wanna show you my fabrics. So I do have some tool, and I know this looks quite a bit darker than her dress, but that's just because it's more dense. When you actually fluff it out so there's only one or two layers, it's the exact same color as the tool used for her dress. And then for the lace, I bought this from Lace Place. And this is quite similar in color to the lace on her dress as well. And it's paler than the tool that was used. It's not quite the right design, but I obviously needed my lace to be much bigger than hers. So I might end up trimming this to make it look a little bit more reminiscent of the shape used on her dress. And then for lining, I have five or six yards of this fabric, which is also from Joann's. It's just one of their cast of satins. It's not particularly high quality, but I really like the color of it. And again, I thought it was a good fit for her dress. And then the most fun fabric for this project is the lining, which is just a quilting cotton covered in unicorns. Because I'm planning to make the bodice with a boned lined interior, I just thought that would be a fun fabric to use for it. And speaking of the bodice, I do already have it draped. However, that is not what we're going to be starting on. We're going to be starting on the skirt first. And the skirt is actually a half circle skirt, or two half circle skirts, because the skirt is made up of two layers. The first layer is made out of a stiff, opaque blue fabric, which serves as the lining for the skirt. And that's what I purchased the satin for. That layer is going to be formed out of a 40 and a half inch long half circle skirt pattern. Then the layer over top of that is made out of tulle and has all of the ruffles and the lace trim sewn onto it. The base pattern is pretty simple, but things are going to get complicated or at least time consuming when it comes to adding all the ruffles. There are six ruffles and they're each spaced six and a half inches apart. I've already done the math for it and transferred all of those markings onto my pattern so I can easily trace them onto the tulle fabric and have good guidelines to follow and sew my ruffles onto. And speaking of those ruffles, even though they're only spaced six and a half inches apart, they need to be longer than six and a half inches because they need to come down low enough to cover the lace trim used on the layer underneath it. And the lace trim is four inches wide. I think each ruffle is going to be ten and a half inches long, and I haven't quite figured out what the width of those ruffles are going to be, but I will have to figure that out at some point to make sure that I have enough fabric. So we'll definitely do that later today, but goal one for today is just going to be getting the lining layer cut out and also getting the tool layer cut out and getting all my markings transferred onto that. So these are my two pattern pieces and I'm working on this downstairs so we're leaving the sewing room for once because I don't have enough floor space upstairs to cut them out. So this one is the underskirt pattern that will be cut out of satin. Uh, so as you can see it's longer than that one and also doesn't have as many markings on it. This one is going to be cut out of tool and I have to transfer all of those lines onto the tool uh, because that is where the ruffles will be mounted. And I also just went through and measured the length of each I don't know what to call this, each marking, I guess, to figure out how wide and how many strips of ruffles I'd have to cut for each one. So this one is 60, this one is 80, this one's 100, that one's 120, that one's 140. I'm sure I could have figured that out with math or predicted that they would be 20 inches bigger than the first one after I got to 100, but I did not, so I just kept measuring. <laughs> so now I can do the math and figure out how many strips I need to cut out and gather down for each tier.
I can't be bothered to lay it out properly, but you guys just saw me cutting out the tool and tracing around it. And this is what it looks like with the pattern removed. I used a teal colored Sharpie, so the line still isn't really harsh even though it's permanent and marked. So the gathered tool should completely cover it and it won't be visible on the final thing. So I'm really happy with this. I like how much it shows up and now it is time to cut out I think 26 ruffles. I did some math and I had to make the ruffles uh, less wide than I wanted originally, so it won't be quite as fluffy, but I think it'll probably actually end up looking more like the doll that way. I just wanted it to be extra ruffly because I'm an extra ruffly type of person, but uh, I definitely have a lot of cutting out to do with those, so that's what I'll be up to next. So I went ahead and cut out all of the strips of tulle, which are currently sitting behind me. So I cut out 23 in total, and I actually had fabric left, which was surprising, which was a happy surprise. And then I decided that I would sew on the bottom two tiers of tulle as a test before I filmed the process and described it to you in great detail. Because if I hated how it looked, then it wasn't really worth filming. And I'm glad that I made that decision because I really don't like how it looks. I think the lace is way too wide and obvious, and I don't like the sheen of the, the fabric that I chose for the underskirt. Speaking of the underskirt, it's currently on my dress form hanging because circle skirts are cut on the bias. They warp, so it's good to let the skirts hang for at least 24 hours and then trimming them down following the original pattern before moving forward with further assembly. And that wasn't necessary for the tool layer because tool is woven differently and it doesn't really warp, but for the satin layer it was definitely necessary. Anyway, I think I'm going to turn that layer so the wrong side is facing out, then there won't be as prominent of a sheen. I'm also going to unpick the lace. Well, actually, I don't think I can really unpick it. I think I'm going to just cut it off with a pair of tiny scissors and then sew new lace on. I think I'm just going to fold the lace I have in half, and I think that's going to give me the look that I'm going for and the proportions that I'm going for. I'm also going to be using a different color of thread because I really don't like how obvious the stitching was for the lace. It's not really problematic here because that's going to get covered by the lace, but I just don't like how it looks actually on the lace. So I found some thread that matches the lace trim a little bit better, and I think that'll improve the overall look a lot. These are the new and improved ruffles, and I think they look much better. I am wishing that I had more fabric and I could make the ruffles denser, and I'm also worried that I'm going to run out of lace, but that also just kind of is what it is, so let's just hope for the best in general. But I've got the tool for two tiers on, and I've also got the lace for two tiers on. So now I'm going to seam together four strips that will form this tier, and then three and a half strips that will form this tier, and get those gathered down and sewn on. And the gathering process I'm using for this is just pushing it underneath the presser foot, and I get a lot of questions about how I get the ruffles even when I do this, and you just kind of get used to it over time, and I don't really know how to explain it better than that you really do just get a feel for it uh, and how densely you're gathering things as you go so I can get it pretty much perfect every time or at least within a few inches which is good enough for something like this so that's the method I'm going to be using and we'll just carry on ahead and hopefully get all of the ruffles on today So this is what I'm looking with so far, and I like how this looks so much better than the first attempt with the full width of the lace, but I'm still not in love with it. I just don't feel like it has the volume. Well, obviously it doesn't have the volume, uh, so I need to get petticoat netting and build a petticoat to go underneath this, but it just feels like it needs more tool or something. I feel like the color of my lace is off, but when you get up close to the doll, the lace is actually really prominent and visible, so I don't feel like mine is that far off. I'm just not loving how mine looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the bodice and hopefully that will leave me feeling a little bit more motivated and a little bit more confident about the skirt. And I actually already have the bodice drafted or at least I thought I did. So this is draped to be fitted underneath the bust and then the back is completely fitted. The upper portion of the bodice is pleated lightly just like hers is to form that sweetheart neckline. However, I think I want to build a bit of an understructure for this that has boning in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drape right on top of this something that doesn't have the pleats uh, that could serve as a lining and have some boning in it to offer some support. So I made a mock-up for the bodice which looks like this and this is the layer that I draped over top of the bodice you originally saw. So this doesn't have the ruching around the sweetheart neckline, it doesn't have the piecing under the bust, but this fit perfectly and since it was draped right on top of the other pieces that led me to believe they would fit really nicely as well. And I have my bodice pieces here and they're cut out of the satin and they're going to have to be covered with the blue tulle. I'm probably going to 
gonna cover them with two or three layers of it so it matches the skirt. Then I also cut out and quickly seamed together the lining for the bodice, and I also sewed down all of the seam allowance to form boning channels for the boning, which I'm going to add into this garment right now. I'm adding the boning to add support so seams won't collapse and it will have a more structured fitted appearance when it's worn. So now I'm just cutting out plastic boning that fits in each casing and threading it in there. And after this done, I'm going to do another fitting because my mock-up didn't have any boning in it. So this fitting will be a little bit different. And then I can go ahead and start working on the outer layer of the bodice, which will be a little bit more complicated because it will have those pleats, but I think it'll be okay. All right, now let's put some pins in this and try it on. So that is the fit of the bodice, which I think is pretty much perfect. I'm really happy with it. Um, and as I said, the boning just adds structure, so this doesn't collapse down. It stays pointed upward, uh, as opposed to adding any reduction. Maybe on some of the other projects in this series, I'll delve more into 1950s evening gown construction and do some linings that actually lace closed and create that reduction, uh, but are also part of the dress. But this isn't going to be one of those pieces, since this is going to be a faster project. So this is what I spent a whole bunch of last night on, and I'm really unhappy with it and my camera doesn't even want to focus on it, which I think shows how horrible it is. So basically, I ended up making this out of one layer of the satin, and then I used three layers of the tulle because I wanted it to have the kind of volume from the tulle in the pleats, but I ended up putting the pleats in the wrong place, and I think there's just too much tulle, so the edges end up looking really thick, and it just feels very clunky, and I'm not happy with it at all. So I think I'm going to completely throw that out, and then use my lining as a base, and redrape the pattern, and try and come up with something that's a little bit better. So luckily I haven't sewn the lining to the bodice yet, so they're completely separate. I can still use the lining that I made and just drape over top of it to get a better, more voluminous bust cup pleat situation, because right now I think this looks terrible. But first, we are going on a little adventure. We're going to Joann's because I've decided this needs more tool. So I'm going to try and get 15 yards of tool and I'm going to try and get a bunch of petticoat net. I ideally want a line so the underskirt would actually be backed with petticoat netting and have some of the natural volume that the Barbie skirt has. And then I also want to build an actual petticoat um, that will be sewn into the dress that will give it a little bit more volume. So that is the plan for today. I had all this black left underneath my eyes that I didn't take off properly. And instead of using makeup remover, I just embraced it and added more black. And that is how I'm going to Joann's today. So let's go there. Hopefully we can get what we need. Hopefully we won't die in a car accident on our way there because I've never been to this Joann's before. Um, and yeah, we'll just, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we have officially made it without dying. So now it is time to see if they have what I need. I really hope they do. Success! I probably should have just gotten the one bolt, but I also found these shiny tools that I thought might be nice to integrate into it. So I figured for 20 bucks it was worth the risk um, of potentially making the dress better by using those. Then I also got all the petticoat net that I needed, which annoyingly was like 10% off, so I couldn't use a 40% off coupon on it, and I didn't know that when I bought it, but it is what it is. Um, so now I am headed home, and then I can get back to work on this dress. So I'm back from Joann's. After I got back, I went ahead and cut out 40, yes, 40 additional strips of the tool. And originally I only cut out 23 strips. So this time I tried to gather them a lot more densely. And this is about 25 or 30 strips sewn together that I haven't gathered down yet. And then on the dress form, I actually have a few tiers that I've added. So I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but now there are two tiers of tool or a tier for the top three tiers. So I sewed the tool on on top of the lace and that kind of diffuses the appearance of the lace a little bit more. And I actually think I need one more layer to be fully happy with it. So I'm hoping that I have enough fabric to do that. But I've added the additional layer to this one, this one, and this one, um, and this one. I didn't realize I'd done that much. So now it's just these two tiers left to do. And I don't know if you can really tell a difference. I definitely can, that the upper layers look a lot more diffused uh, than the bottom layers where the lace is a lot more prominent. But there's still obviously a lot more work to be done. And then I have to take the lining downstairs and trim it because it's been hanging and it's probably warped a little bit. And then I'm going to cut out a piece of petticoat netting that is the exact same shape and size. And then I will have a reinforced panel that forms the underskirt and hopefully gives us a little Bit more volume and from there I'm going to start to make a petticoat to go underneath this. So I just laid out the underskirt and I folded it in half and then I laid the pattern on top and I've weighted it down and you can see how much extends past the edge at points. So that's how much this is warped just from hanging overnight. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that portion or really any portion that extends past the edge of the pattern off. I'm going to use that pattern to cut out an identical layer of petticoat net. And petticoat net feels very different than tulle. It's a very stiff netting that holds it 
its shape. You can find different stiffnesses of this. The type I got is from Joann, so it's not the highest quality and it's not the strongest or stiffest stuff. But it should be okay for this. So my goal is just to completely line this panel with the petticoat netting so it has a little bit more structural integrity and then I will build up a little petticoat that goes underneath it that's sewn into the waist of the dress which is going to provide even more volume. I don't know if you'll be able to see it but I just cut out the layer of petticoat netting and I trimmed it to match the size of this piece and then I actually pinned it on around the hem. But I just realized I pinned these together the wrong way so I have to pin these with the right sides facing each other all the way around the hem and then sew them together with a half inch allowance or actually one inch allowance because that's the allowance I originally left for the hem. And then we'll put it on the dress form and hopefully we'll have a bit more volume to it. So I got the layer of tulle sewn into the lining and it didn't make as big of a difference as I wanted. Uh, it made a tiny difference but no real change. So I'm going to have to make a pretty substantial petticoat or underskirt to go underneath this. So I'm actually going to use the pattern that I drafted for the lining which is a circle skirt pattern as a base for the petticoat. And I'm going to cut shorter and shorter circle skirts that will have progressively longer ruffles so they all have a level hem and stacking those should provide me with a good amount of volume and it will provide me with volume in this A-line shape that the doll has instead of very cupcake-ish shape where it's coming straight off the waist and falling straight down. Hopefully I can layer these petticoats over some shorter 1950s petticoats that I have and then I won't have to build them up quite as substantially and I can focus the volume more on the hem because I have uh, petticoats that are very full to around the knee. Also this has grown on me a lot the density of the tool. I think it looks really nice and floaty so I don't even think they need to add another tier. Of course I don't because I have plenty of tool left as you can see by the giant pile over there. Um, but I do think I have enough that I could add another layer if I wanted. So I'll continue to think about that, uh, but I won't make any final decisions until the petticoat's done and I can get an idea of the shape of it. So I haven't filmed any of the process just because it's been kind of tedious, but I've done three or four layers. I have to get down and count one, two, three layers. And as you can see, the ruffles get progressively longer and the circle skirt portion gets progressively shorter the further we go. So the next one is going to be another four inches shorter and then the final tier is going to be another four inches shorter than that. And I actually have the next tier cut out. That is the skirt portion. Those are the ruffles. And I think I should have enough fabric left for the final tier. But I definitely don't have a lot of fabric left. I've really gone through the 20 yards that I purchased today. So I think this is all I'm going to do for tonight because my neck's kind of acting up. So I'm going to put the other layers on top just to get an idea of how it looks. And then we'll see. Uh, but so far this hasn't provided as much volume and as stiff of an understructure as I wanted. So I'm considering adding hoops to it. But I don't really want to do that. So we'll just see what it looks like. I am overjoyed with how this looks. The petticoat makes all the difference. And I think I'm really going to capture the shape of the doll's dress by adding the final two tiers. So I'm really thrilled with this. I'm going to take it off the dress form for tonight because I don't want the weight of all of the tulle and the underskirt to collapse the petticoats underneath it because it's surprisingly heavy. Uh, but I'm thrilled with how this looks. I think this is a good point to call it quits for tonight. And I can come back at it tomorrow. So, so far this morning, I've cut out another layer for the petticoat, which I quickly decided to scrap because I didn't actually have enough fabric to cut it out properly. So it was making a really odd shape over top of the petticoat layers I've already made. And speaking of the petticoat layers I've already made, also this morning I got the now final tier assembled. So I did this by first sewing together all the strips that make up the ruffle, of which there are four. And then those strips are loosely gathered down until they match the measurement of the bottom edge of the circle skirt portion of the petticoat for that tier. And then it's sewn onto the circle skirt portion of that petticoat tier. And this is what it looks like. So that is the process that I did for all of these. They're just various different lengths. And I'm really happy with how it looks. I think over on Patreon, I'm going to try and include all the measurements that I used for the skirt. So if you want to make this petticoat or the overskirt, uh, there should be vague instructions um, or measurements over there. Because I have been taking very sloppy notes that currently look like this, but I'll try and clean up a little bit. And I've also been listening to Green Day music. So now the next step is going to be sewing up the back seams of each of these, and each back seam for each tier is going to be done up individually. So instead of having one really thick seam where all the fabric kind of collapses inward at that point, each layer will be independent. They'll just be mounted together at some sort of closure point. So I'm going to leave the top 12 inches of each seam open to allow for that closure that I make at a later date, but the rest is going to be stitched up and then it can be sewn to the skirt. Actually, I should put the skirt on top of this and decide if I want to add any additional tool to it, and then I can go ahead and sew everything up. 
So this is without the lining, so you can kind of see the petticoat through it. But I actually don't think I need any additional tulle on this. I think the opacity of the lace is pretty spot on for the doll, uh, and I'm really pretty pleased with it. So I think I'm going to leave it there, and that means that I can go ahead and get the back seam for this sewn up as well, which is going to be quite a process since there are so many layers of tulle. So that is what I'm up to now, and I'll report back when it's done. Probably significantly more frustrated than I am now because it's definitely my least favorite part of the project so far. I can already tell. So I just sewed the back seam for the underskirt and then I trimmed it with pinking shears. It was a little bit too uh, difficult to maneuver for me to feel comfortable sewing this as a French seam. So this is the next best thing. And then I also sewed together all of the layers of the petticoat around the waistline as well as around the opening in the back. So all I've left to do is attach these two layers together and then sew up the back seam for the tool layer and somehow get that sewn on as well. But the mail just came and I got an order from Dangerfield so I'm going to take a break to try on clothing. Okay this was a officially an amazing purchase. It is a skirt made out of tapestry fabric that has woodland animals on it and a matching jacket. I love it so much. So this is what I have created. I went ahead and I sewed the petticoat to the lining layer and I also sewed the back edges together and then I sewed up the back seam for the tool layer and I sewed that to the waist of the underlay slash petticoat layer and now I have this giant blob of tool and I'm going to put it on the dress form and we can see what it looks like and then I have to go downstairs and eat lunch and then I have a doctor's appointment but hopefully tonight I can get started on my second attempt at the bodice which will hopefully go a little bit better than the first. So so I just came out to work with every intention of remaking the bodice because I was so unhappy with this the other day but I just tried it on and it's grown on me like I really don't know what I would do to make it better other than redo the pleat because as you can see on the doll if my camera focuses there are two defined knife plates and mine overlap each other but that's just kind of something you have to do uh, to accommodate the cup size but other than that I really don't think I would change anything um, so I'm gonna move ahead with this and get the lining sewn in and get the closures done I wasn't expecting this but I'm glad I didn't completely trash this because as I said it's grown on me quite a lot so that is going to be the plan with this and then we'll almost be done aside from closures which I hate doing closures are like my least favorite part of every project also this is what the pattern looks like for anyone wondering so those are the pleats so I did end up moving the pleats a little bit because as I said I needed them to have a little bit more volume to accommodate the bust this is the fitted portion under the bust and this is the back panel which is the same for both the lining and the bodice and then the lining pattern is over here as you can see it is is uh, more of a traditionally seamed bodice. So that is the understructure for it, that's the overstructure, and I made this out of one layer of the satin and four layers of tulle because I wanted the tulle to be quite dense uh, because it's quite dense on the skirt and I wanted it to mimic the color perfectly. So yeah, that's what that looks like. It's a little puckered right now since it's all pinned, but I'm gonna get sewn together and then it should be looking a lot better. So I just roughly gathered down the top edge of the skirt because it was about five inches too big for the bodice. So you can see some of those gathers there. Uh, I just used running stitches and did it by hand. And now the bodice is pinned to the skirt and I'm going to sew them together with the right sides facing each other and a three quarter inch seam allowance. Also, sorry I haven't filmed a whole lot of these recent steps. It's because usually my tripod goes there and as you can see, this takes up so much space uh, that I really don't have a place to put the tripod where the fabric won't be at risk of catching on it. And since this is made out of tulle and netting, they're relatively weak fabrics and if they do catch on metal or anything sharp, they can and will tear. So I've been extra careful and that's why I haven't been documenting this as much, but hopefully the little clips in between explaining stuff make it relatively clear. So that is it for this project and for this video. Though there were definitely some ups and downs, it was a really fun three days and I really enjoyed working on this and I really enjoyed the finished product too. So thank you to all of my wonderful patrons for making this project possible as well as voting for this project because I really did enjoy it and I really hope that all of you like how it turned out and liked this video in general. And if you did, giving this video a like and a comment really helps me out. And if you'd like to see more adventures in trying to replicate Barbie outfits, then definitely subscribe because I'm planning to do more. In fact, right now there's going to be a poll over on Patreon where you can vote between eight different designs on which one you think that I should attempt next. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to all of you guys very, very soon.